Hi there, this is Craig Beck from StopDrinkingExpert.com and today's video comes from a hotel bedroom in Sydney, Australia. And uh, I tell you, it's the first time I've been to Sydney, uh, first time I've been to Australia, in fact, and I've noticed something quite unique about Australia and alcohol. It seems to be quite difficult to buy alcohol here. Um, and I'm sure my Australian viewers will correct me or confirm this, but I've just been walking around Sydney today and I noticed that the convenience stores don't sell alcohol. There's nothing there, not even beer. And I mean, and this is just such a contrast to the UK because in the UK they sell it everywhere. They sell it in corner shops, they sell it in gas stations. I mean, you, you can buy a bottle of vodka while you're filling up your car with, with petrol in the UK. It's insane. Uh, but here in Australia, uh, I went into a supermarket, they didn't have a liquor section. Uh, the convenience stores don't sell liquor, so I'm assuming, and I may be wrong, and I'm sure you'll correct me, uh, I'm assuming here in Australia you have to buy booze in a, in a liquor store, like an off-license. And if that is the case, then good on you, Australia. Um, so today's video, uh, let's call him Dave. Let's change his name. It's a little bit sensitive. Uh, and Dave has emailed and said, could alcohol be the cause of my erectile dysfunction? So before we get into this, Dave, let's, uh, let's throw out the disclaimer here because any medical problem, you're better off getting it diagnosed properly. You really should be going to a GP with this rather than looking on YouTube and trying to Google it because I know from experience, Dr. Google is a drama queen. Dr. Google will tell you you're about to die. It doesn't matter what you put in, <laughs> you, you could have a nosebleed and type it into Google and tell you that you've got brain cancer. It, it scares the hell out of you. Uh, so don't try and self-diagnose. I've done it myself and it, it, it never works out. You, you never get it right. Uh, you just work yourself up and you get worried and you just need a proper doctor to come along and actually tell you what's going on. So please, for any medical problem, go and see a GP. The other thing to mention is it is dangerous to assume. It is dangerous to look at something wrong with your body uh, and, and say that's because of alcohol. Because assuming, like the saying says, makes an ass of you and me, it's dangerous. So with that disclaimer fairly and squarely out there, let's talk about the subject at hand. Could alcohol use lead to ED? Erectile dysfunction, or as it's sometimes called, impotence. And the answer is yes. And there is quite a lot of clinical research to back this up. But we'll start with the psychological aspect rather than the physical element of the, the drug on, your, on, the, on the body and on the, uh, on the genitals. I mean, alcohol is a depressant. So that means that your mood for sex is going to reduce because it's going to be depressed. So if you have a high sex drive and you develop a, a drinking problem, then your sex drive will decline. There's no two ways about it. You are taking a drug that causes that. So it's, it's entirely logical that your demand, your need and desire for sex is going to decrease. Now, that's emotion. Now, the physical aspect and uh, effect of the drug on the human body is that it prevents blood flow to the penis. So what research has shown us is that people who drink heavily, uh, men who drink heavily, will generally take longer to achieve an erection and they will struggle to sustain it uh, for as long as a sober guy would. And this has been repeated time and time again in research studies. So there's no really arguing against it now. It does have a physical effect on the sexual organs. Now, some men report different uh, appearances of symptoms. Some guys, um, if they drink heavily, will be unable to get an erection at all that night or even the day after. It is a temporary effect, but certainly for 24 to 48 hours, it's going to cause a problem. Now, some guys can still get an erection, but it takes them longer, and perhaps it's not as um, prolific as you would like, or as you've had in the past. And the other thing worth mentioning about this, and the research around this, is that if you have a long-term heavy drinking problem, then your chances of having erectile dysfunction as a direct result of your alcohol intake is increased by 60 to 70 percent. So if you take a sober guy and a heavy drinking guy who's been drinking for a long time, 
the drinker has a 70% chance more uh, chance of having erectile dysfunction than the sober guy. So it's not an insignificant amount. It's not like 5%, 10%, something like that. 70%, I mean, you're, you're pretty much saying if you drink heavily for years and years and years, you're, you're going to have problems in this department. First of all, your desire for sex is going to go downhill, and then your ability to perform is going to be severely damaged by the drug. This is huge motivation, isn't it? Because if, if regular good sex is important to you, and I, I guess for most men it is, then what are you going to choose? Are you going to choose sex or alcohol? Don't make that wrong decision because you know I know which one's better. But on the serious side, you know, there are relationships, millions of relationships that have been destroyed because of this very reason. Because if you take a healthy couple, very much in love, having regular sex, lots of passion, lots of lots of touching and lots of tactile behavior, really into each other, and you bring alcohol in the male's interest in sex declines and then he can't get an erection. The woman in the relationship takes this as personal and assumes that he's not attracted anymore and then her worry is then compounded by the fact that he doesn't seem to be showing interest in sex as much as before. Before you know what's going on, she's doubting the relationship. Trust has already been destroyed because there's almost a certainty that the drinker is now lying about the amount of alcohol they're using. Uh, and they won't want to admit that they can't get an erection because they're drinking too much. So now they'll have to make up some excuse, which is another lie. So once you break the trust in a relationship and you remove the passion and the emotion and the connection, you run the risk of destroying something beautiful all because you're addicted to a drug. So if this isn't motivation enough to kick this poison out of your life, I don't know what is. If you have any questions, drop me an email. Please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you want a free copy of my book, go to www.stopdrinkingexpert.com, enter your email address, and I will send it to you straight away. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.